Lesson 26 are reports on the Argentine survival resurgence by Liberation.fr magazine in France, which I translated into English. So if you Google for Liberation colon Argentine Time Creditos articles, you'll find my article where I talk about what's happening in Argentina in 2002. Now, this is now that the barter systems have really exploded after the banking system shut down. So remember now, the banking system shut down, all the bank accounts are closed, people can't get their money, and what are they going to do? Here's what they did. So, uh, Liberation at www.liberation.fr is a publication in France which seems to have done a series of articles on the phenomenal growth of time creditos in Argentina. So, I translated them into English because I speak French and English. So, Seven Years of Barter in Argentina by Francis Huertas. When, in the month of April 1995, 23 people got together in a garage in Bernal in the suburb of Buenos Aires to found the first Troc Club, Argentina was already in crisis. But the world prefers the ecstasy behind their 8% rate of growth in 1994 than to denounce the 18.5% unemployment, the 10 million poor, and the crazy growth of the external debt, resulting in five years of ultra-liberal recipes. I don't know why they call Lone Shark and liberal. The illusory stability from the convertibility parity peso dollar comes with an unseen degree of corruption for the majority of Argentinians. It's still preferable to the hyperinflation of the 1989. Barter is quickly becoming the barometer of the social situation. In 1996, dozens of clubs opened up in the capital. They're organized under the care of the Global Solidarity Talk Network. Differences between participants, concerning notably the right of entry, payable in pesos, provoked a schism in 1997. Some clubs sprang into existence all over the country. In 1999, when Argentina entered the crisis, the truck became a social phenomenon. It accentuated an October 2001 with the blockage of savings in banks from which ensued a painful penury of liquid money. So nobody had cash. Penury of liquid money. So it's unheard of that 10,000 people may find themselves on Saturday at La Bernalesa, a textile plant in the south part of Buenos Aires, where the principal club of the country operates. Several parallel networks or independents are seen today. Even Barrio Norte, the shit quarter of Buenos Aires, has their truck club. So Argentina saves some of its credit with barter. More than 19 million Argentines live below the poverty level. To avoid the misery, they exchange goods and services. And don't forget, in Britain, they called Let's the anti-poverty system. So, with 200 million paper cuttings in circulation, wow, the credito, unofficial money, is overwhelmed by its success. Again, by Francis Huertas, uh, 22nd of August, 2002. In Argentina... Trucking has become the means of survival in the face of the economic crisis. They are more than six million now, more than a quarter of the population, to take advantage of and participate in a veritable parallel economy. An exceptional rise which accompanies that of the unemployment and poverty. According to the last official statistics published in mid-August, 53.8% of the Argentine population, more than 19 out of 36 million citizens, live below the poverty level with less than $170 per month. 8.4 million face hunger every day. The country is entering its third trimester, 2000, in its fifth consecutive year of recession. Forum. In its, this context, the role of the barter clubs is no longer limited to making ends meet at the end of the month. For many, they've become the only way to obtain food and clothing. When the World Social Forum opens in Buenos Aires, inspired by the two episodes in Porto Alegre, Brazil, its promoters also see in it a way of contesting the liberal economic system that precipitated Argentine into the crisis in the first place. Now, it ain't liberal, it's conservative too. The conservatives had loan sharking, the liberals have loan sharking, the NDP, whoever is in, allow loan sharking, so the problem ain't liberal. 
The forum, this great social forum, will open tonight with a demonstration against neoliberalism, okay, or neoconservatism, or neo-whatever that allows loan sharking. Under the title, The Neoliberal Crisis in Argentina and the Challenges of the Global Movement, it will host 400 NGOs, including Physicians for World Peace, Greenpeace, Amnesty International, etc. And don't forget, at the United Nations in 2000, the Millennium Assembly, there was the Millennium Forum of 1,350 NGOs, where I made my presentation in, on behalf of the Abolitionist Party of Canada that we should have a time standard of money time-based currency, and that got into the United Nations Millennium Resolution C6 for a time-based currency. Someday, your time is going to be worth as much in an ice bank as some gold. Imagine that, a human being worth the same or more than gold. <laughs> some 500 foreign delegations are expected to attend, including ATTACK. And ATTACK, in 1999, they invited me to speak in France at their big meeting. They support Let's's, and I say good for you attack i point out that you're one of the early supporters of fixing money the debates which will attempt to explain the causes and the consequences of the argentinian crisis what loan shark and they ran out of money and the possible alternatives to the actual model banks without loan sharking will not fail to raise the boom and barter so, I just pointed out that attack supports Let's and Set. So, there now exists some 8,000 branches in the country. Wow, went from 500 in 2001 to 8,000 in 2002. Doesn't take long for people with computers to get organized, right? The states could save themselves just as fast. You watch. All they need to do is have their banking system shut down. Everybody have no money. They'll wise up pretty quickly. So, 8,000 branches in the country. The first of them was born in 1995 in the suburb of Buenos Aires at the initiative of a dozen people. It, even though the experiment is not unique in the world, see page 3, the speed with which it was developed in Argentina is without precedent. True. There have been let's growing since 19, er, early 1980s in Canada, Britain, New Zealand, and nowhere did they grow fast because nowhere were people really poor enough with a banking system shut down. But you wait. When the banking system collapses in Australia, people will switch to their let's is there. And when the banks collapse in New Zealand, people will go to their let's bank branches. And when their banking system collapses in Canada, there are a hundred different time-based currencies in Canada people can go join. So we just need to have the big system collapse, the big ship collapse, so people jump onto their stable lifeboats. To facilitate exchanges, members can buy in with goods for creditos and unofficial currency in coupons from 1 to 50 units. They can be used to buy goods and procure services, get English lessons, medical or legal consultations. More than 200 million creditos note notes are in circulation within the network, that being 80% of existing monies in Argentina, peso, dollar, and provincial currencies. Wow! 80% of the money is private interest-free stuff. Sabotage. In the past couple of weeks, the system seemed to have been overwhelmed by success. Counterfeit creditos are spreading across the country. Perfectly copied, they are currently accepted in clubs. Confidence, a key in the system, has been shaken. Yeah, but where are the guys who are sabotaging the clubs? What are they going to do with the stuff they buy? I just want to go get 50 sweaters just because I want to hurt the club. In certain Buenos Aires clubs, prices are skyrocketing. So, counterfeiting can hurt if you don't fight it right. So, some clubs are deserted. We're the victims of sabotage, protests Horacio Covas, one of the founders of the Solidarity Global Talk Network, who denounces the pressures of certain political factions to limit the system's boom. So, some of the politicians being paid by their bankers want to limit the system. Get back to banking money, which we don't have, right? So, it's evident that barter is a means of social preservation that does not serve the interests of certain politicians who would rather have people keep starving. Think about those politicians. What's the color of their soul? So, it remains to be seen today if the organizers will manage to put the system back in order, a necessary condition for the parallel economy to survive. 